A pivotal day for Tropical Storm Elsa you see there inching closer to Cuba and to the Florida coast. What we can expect in the hours ahead with the latest forecast track plus new spaghetti models ahead here on Tracking the Tropics. Hey there, folks. J.B. Buno here with you live in your hurricane headquarters. We've got a packed panel of meteorologists joining us today from across the southeast the United States. Great to have WFLA's Greg Bennett here on the program. Right side of your screen also joining us from Mobile, Alabama, WKRG's Colleen Peterson, meteorologist there. You might recognize her from some of the coverage from the Mobile area last year. Great to have you here on this edition this Sunday, July 4th edition here of Tracking the Tropics. Happy July 4th to everybody out there. A lot to get to here with Tropical Storm Elsa. We are going to get to your comments here and your questions in the Facebook Live comment section here momentarily in our live meteorologist q and I know that you have a lot of questions if you're joining us, especially from the Sunshine State here in Florida. So you can use hashtag Hey Colleen, hashtag Hey Greg, hashtag Hey JB, or hashtag Hey Ian for meteorologist Ian Oliver standing by, and we'll get to those comments here momentarily. But Ian, we just got in a new update here on Tropical Storm Elsa. JB, good morning and happy 4th of July to everybody. Hope you're having a great holiday weekend. Of course, we've been tracking Elsa closely over the last few days, and thankfully, it's a storm that's really struggled as we've moved on uh, through this holiday weekend so far. This is the latest update from the National Hurricane Center. Just came down at 11 a.m. Maximum winds reduced to 60 miles per hour. Pressure all the way up at 1,009 millibars. That's a high pressure for a storm producing max winds up to 60 miles per hour, but... Hurricane hunters in the storm right now. That's what they've found. Center of circulation very close to the northern coast of Jamaica, mountainous uh, island, and also dealing with some land interaction with the southwestern portion of Haiti and also now southeastern parts of Cuba. I loved how you said a pivotal day, JB, because there are some challenges for this system as we move through the next 24 hours, mostly related to land interaction, a lot of it as we head on through the next 24 to 30 hours or so. But again, this has been a disorganized system. We've seen these bursts of convection Outside of that center of circulation, the thunderstorm activity has really struggled to consolidate in that center of circulation, due in part because of what was at times that very fast motion. Still moving to the west-northwest at 13 miles per hour, that has slowed down significantly from yesterday, but there is still a component of westerly shear on this system, which tilts the vortex a little bit. The low-level center of circulation is offset from the mid-level center of circulation. We've seen big wind gusts as detected by the hurricane hunters, but those have all been offset from that center of circulation. So that's why it doesn't have that classic structure and now it has challenges ahead. Not a well-formed storm that's gonna have to deal with a lot of land. Not only Jamaica, southwestern parts of Haiti right now, but as it makes its trek to the north and west, eventually moving over Cuba as we head towards the latter portion of today, overnight tonight, and through a good chunk of tomorrow. Now the National Hurricane Center forecast track very little change to this in the latest update with still maintaining tropical storm intensity as it moves north of Cuba. This will be a critical period here, what the storm looks like when it emerges off the northwestern coast of Cuba into the Florida Straits or the far southeastern parts of the Gulf of Mexico. That's where sea surface temperatures are fairly warm. There will be some extra wind shear on the system out of the south and west at that point. So kind of competing factors for intensification. It's really all going to come down to how well this system, which isn't well formed at this point, can hold itself together as it moves through some high terrain, mountainous terrain through portions of Cuba. These are the latest spaghetti plots and you see that forecast consensus. This is tomorrow evening pulling north and west off the northwestern part of Cuba and then it generally makes a turn to the north and then eventually the northeast. A forecast cone still includes here in the Tampa Bay area with the potential for some tropical storm impacts Tuesday and Wednesday. Tropical storm conditions, definitely a possibility. And we'll talk more about those possibilities as we move farther into the show. There's the warm sea surface temperatures, low and mid 80s across the southeastern Gulf of Mexico. That really though is about all the storm has going for it as we move on through the next few days with the land interaction and the overall poor structure of the system. This is just one forecast model, but there are a number of forecast models that show a severely disrupted system once it makes that trek over the higher terrain of Cuba, emerging into the eastern Gulf of Mexico as a very low end tropical system, maybe passing just off to our west here in Tampa Bay. The exact track and of course the intensity of the system, that's 
going to determine what we see here as far as impacts. Of course, we've got deep tropical moisture with this system. This is the GFS forecast model taking that moisture into the southeastern Gulf of Mexico. But again, definitely not a banner signature of a well-formed tropical system. If you were around yesterday, heavy rainfall across the Tampa Bay area, better than two and a half inches recorded at Tampa International Airport. Kind of felt like we were going through a tropical storm for a good portion of the day yesterday. Your 4th of July forecast today, thankfully, is significantly drier. Still some spotty showers and thunderstorms. This is Max Defender 8, though. I want to show you this because as Elsa approaches us with the long extended range of our S-band radar, we'll be able to see a very clear picture of the system, whatever it looks like, whether it's well-formed or whether it's just kind of a ragged, very weak tropical system, we'll be able to see that in great detail with Max Defender 8. So we do have Colleen and Greg standing by. We'll get to our meteorologist Q&A portion of the show. Some challenges ahead as we move on through the next 24 to 30 hours. Very curious to see what Elsa looks like once it moves over Cuba. Meteorologist Ian Oliver here with the very latest standing in front of Max Fender 8 radar here. Again, J.B. Buno, Greg Bennett, Colleen Peterson joining us now. And you see the bottom of your screen. Use a hashtag, ask a question. That's what we do here, everybody here on Tracking the Tropics. We're going to, uh, Ian might join us uh, later on in the episode. There's some important things that we're getting to here, everybody, in your hurricane headquarters. A lot developing here at this hour. Uh, but first and foremost, we'll get to this comment here from Sylvia Williams. Hashtag hey, JB, happy fourth. Wish can send you a plate. Yeah, a plate. Plate sounds pretty good. You know what also sounds good, Greg? How about a, a weakening trend here to continue here as we clo closely monitor a tropical storm? You know, I, I wish I could say that we have like a real shot of this uh, dropping its major intensity, you know, going from 60 mile per hour sustained winds to maybe dropping to, you know, 20 or 30 miles per hour. And then we're just into a, a tropical wave at that point. But, you know, the one thing that's really aiding uh, Elsa at this point in time, really the only thing that's aiding Elsa at this point in time is the warm waters throughout the Caribbean. Uh, we've got uh, the sea surface temperatures ranging anywhere from about 81 degrees to 86 degrees and not only that it's deep warm water so that's what's really helping us out uh, uh, to keep Elsa kind of sort of together as it comes through uh, this terrible terrain of uh, these Caribbean islands uh, through Jamaica through Cuba uh, one of the highest elevations I believe in Jamaica is over 7,000 feet and that's been tearing into Elsa uh, from uh, earlier this morning uh, it actually helped drop it uh, down from 65 miles per hour down to uh, 60 mile per hour sustained winds. Uh, so you think that's something that's on the lighter side, and it truly is in regards to decreasing in intensity. And I got to tell you, it's really from that uh, warm water sucking in all of that energy uh, and uh, allowing it to kind of sort of hold itself together here. But we've got to go through Cuba. That's another uh, mountainous kind of uh, island that it has to go through. And uh, that's really going to uh, tell the tale if we're going to keep this thing together and uh, maybe keep it around 50, 60 mile per hour sustained winds on its track towards the Gulf of Mexico. We're live here on Facebook pages across the southeastern United States, including WKRG's Facebook page, where Colleen Peterson is joining us, everybody from Mobile, Alabama, the Gulf Coast region. Also, shout out WMBB's Facebook page. We know that we have a lot of questions coming in from Panama City, the Panama City Beach area, the Florida Panhandle, coming your way here in just a second. Let's get to this one here. I'm going to throw this one over Colleen's way from Amanda Duffy. Because Elsa, Elsa has slowed down so much, will it regain Strength. There's a lot of comments coming in here, Colleen, regarding whether or not there's any chance for more intensification here in the hours or days ahead. Yeah, that's a very good question. Even though Elsa has slowed down slightly, it's still moving at 13 miles per hour, which is a fast moving storm. So there is little opportunity for Elsa to re-strengthen. And there are two different opportunities. Right now, after it exits Jamaica and heading towards Cuba, it'll be over water briefly for maybe five hours until it heads over Cuba overnight tonight. So slight chance for it to re-strengthen. And then the warm waters after Cuba, right along the Florida Straits before it heads towards the Florida Keys, that's another opportunity that Elsa could have to re-strengthen with the warm waters. But at the same time, 
That's when the shear will be kicking in. So the north, uh, the southwest shear will be tearing apart Elsa at the same time while it's trying to absorb the warm waters before it heads towards the Florida Keys. So they went ahead and issued tropical storm warning uh, for portions of the Florida Keys and the other portion uh, just west of Miami is under tropical storm watch just to know that it still has that opportunity to hold that tropical storm strength. But as Greg mentioned, we are not sure what Elsa will look like after being torn apart by the mountainous terrain of Cuba. So a lot of question marks. I think once we get a view of what Elsa looks like after Cuba, we'll have a better understanding of the intensity and if it will have that opportunity to strengthen. Colleen, I think you're uh, perhaps and you and the folks there in Mobile a little relieved to see something not heading in your direction. Yeah. There are a lot of yeah. questions, though, whether or not this this track is going to continue to shift west. The 11 o'clock update came in, everybody, and we noticed that there was a little bit of a westwardly movement there as far as the forecast cone. But we'll get to more of that here in just a second. Greg, you're up next here. We're going to throw this one here from Yvonne Wells joining us. What are the odds of Elsa hitting the Tampa Bay area? I mean, you've got to get back towards the, the cone of uncertainty. The entire area is, is under that cone. Hillsborough, Pinellas County, it stretches all the way to the Orlando Metro. Uh, so, yes, there's an opportunity for impact to the city of Tampa, the bay itself, and uh, stretching through the entire Tampa Bay viewing area in general, which goes all the way up through the Nature Coast into Citrus County, smack back down into uh, Sarasota. Uh, the highest chances... We don't even want to go into that route yet uh, because uh, we have got to go through Cuba first. We're still monitoring the Atlantic high pressure system. If that's going to undulate east to west, maybe it's going to relax a tad. That'll change the alteration uh, of uh, ELSA. Then we've got another small area of high pressure on the southern end of the Gulf of Mexico that's aiding the steering mechanism back up to the north and then trying to push it a little bit more towards the state of Florida. If we get rid of that or strengthen it, that's going to all it as well. Uh, so there's a lot of different uh, opportunities still for Elsa to steer in a completely different direction. I, I love this graphic right here because it's showing you all the different model runs and a lot of them are getting closer and closer to uh, pinpointing it, uh, maybe uh, off around the, the big bend of uh, Florida, but you can only take this information with uh, the information we're getting from the atmosphere at this point in time. And we all know the atmosphere loves to change. This is why it's called forecasting, folks, and not facting, okay? Uh, so uh, we got to continue to monitor the atmosphere, see the changes, put in the data, and then start moving forward with our new uh, kind of model runs here. So I can tell you we definitely have a shot uh, to see impact uh, from uh, Tropical Storm Elsa. We definitely have a shot to see some uh, tropical downpours, some very gusty winds out there, uh, which may lead to an opportunity for down power. Uh, uh, down trees, down power lines, uh, maybe some flash flooding. So that's as far as I'm going to go with it here, uh, JB, with uh, saying, you know, what's the odds of us getting impact uh, with uh, Elsa here in Tampa? Monitoring a lot of different Facebook Live comment sections here, folks, and we have questions coming in from both sort of the western end here, closer to where Colleen is in Mobile. we got some questions coming in from the Florida Panhandle, some questions coming in from South Florida as well. That's all ahead here. Don't go anywhere, folks, here on Track on the Tropics. We're going to get to as many of these regions, many as many of the sections of the map here as possible. I just saw a question come in, though, without a hashtag that I want to address here uh, really briefly. Uh, again, our super fans here always asking about what, what is the Euro showing, the, the, uh, the very, very popular Euro model. And the Euro has been very consistent in showing uh, this, this system, Elsa, just falling apart after the land interaction in Cuba. And, Greg, as I understand it, that's also been with this 11 o'clock update is that the euro is, is has been very steady throughout this whole point very very prominent and just ripping it apart into literally just a tropical wave that slaps the state of florida and uh you know at the same time we've got a lot of other models the gfs the wharf uh are, are all showing well offshore which are other uh models that uh, really like to uh predict uh tracks of tropical weather in a decent fashion for us those are some of the main ones that we really start watching they're not the ones that we always go for uh, but um, they do show a, a very good pattern over decades and decades of use of being pretty accurate for us so those are ones that we monitor closely it's not necessarily the end-all be-all that we uh, track for but uh, this right here for example the moisture content forecast this is technically taking from the gfs 
in a sense. And you can see that uh, all of that blue on the mat there, that's your very heavy moisture content. That's your heavy downpours. That's basically uh, the area of Elsa. And notice in this particular model run, it's more of a Western track getting into and, the and, panhandle. And that's what I want to get to here with this next question coming in from WMBB's Facebook page. Katie Rose is joining us on a have Colleen chime in here for Katie's question. What are the chances this storm will shift uh, further west? Not that the northern Gulf Coast needs any more punishment after what 2020 brought last year, right, Colleen? Yeah, that's exactly right. That's a great question. The track has been pretty consistent with targeting Florida and having that northeast movement. But if Elsa starts to fall apart after Cuba, then it's not going to be as influenced from those upper level steering forces. So it could just be a wave of rain that heads into the eastern Gulf of Mexico. And if it's not being as influenced by the upper level steering forces, we could have some of the tropical moisture and possibly have Elsa shift off farther in a westward track. So that is an outlying possibility, but that is definitely on the table. And that's a great question. Uh, but as of now, we are not in the cone here along the Alabama uh, and the Northwest Florida coast over to Okaloosa County. But that's something we'll be watching here closely. It is on the table again, because like Greg said, we are forecasting, not facting here. So that is definitely something we'll be watching closely. Very closely here. Let's get to this next pair of questions here. I'm going to throw up both Colleen and Greg for these two. As we're talking about South Florida here, oh, folks, yeah. uh, Cheryl here, has to get JB. What about Miami? And then, um, oh, and then Yvonne was asking about the Tampa Bay area, but we also had a question here as well uh, from Stacy Goldstein that we didn't have in the queue here. I live in Broward County, Florida, closer to the Keys. What th should they expect in Broward County uh, from Tropical Storm Elsa? So, guys, not only that, we also have, of course, the condo collapse down there in Surfside. Yeah. What are we talking about as far as impacts here in the southern end of the state? All right. Uh, Colleen, if you want, you could go ahead and take this one for a hot second for sure. Yeah, of course. I mean, the after hearing about what happened in Surfside, I think every meteorologist was thinking, oh, no, they cannot have a storm right now with all that debris there. So it's looking like the models are trending farther offshore, which is better for Miami uh, in the east coast of Florida. So that is on a better news for them. So trending towards more towards the uh, west side of Florida. Uh, so Tampa Bay area, Greg, is really in that, you know, it might head right on and yeah. it might just trail off the shore. We we might get a few outer rain bands, but those outer rain bands can be strong and they can pack some tornadic activity yeah. like we got a few weeks ago. From yeah, ab absolutely, Colleen. And that's where you've really got to be uh, careful. It's very, very safe out there because that's where uh, everybody seems to put, uh, you know, their guard down uh, when you're dealing with the outer edge of maybe a tropical system oh we don't have to worry it's just a couple of rain bands well you know those rain bands love to spin up severe thunderstorms which have a great opportunity to uh, drop down those ef zeros ef1 tornadoes very common mind you uh with tropical weather whether it's a hurricane or a tropical storm even tropical depressions have that opportunity to create uh, uh tornadoes out there so that is something that you absolutely cannot rule out for uh, the city of tampa getting slapped with one of those rain bands an opportunity within that rain band to have severe storm activity and within that severe storm an opportunity for tornado development i think it's uh, safe to say that we're going to be getting some type of major wet weather uh situation especially off around uh, the tampa bay metro pinellas county area we're going to definitely see that in regards to miami i'm fully with you on that colleen this is not uh, a situation that uh, i think the city uh, of miami uh, needs to handle right now uh but there's a couple of options still on the table, right? We talked about the Euro track, and if this does start to decrease and rip apart, we've got a massive tropical wave of rain and uh, still some breezy conditions, still some intense storms that may yield gusts at 50 or even 60 miles per hour, and that may be a massive concern uh, for uh, still the Miami area because it would still move through, right through the state, through uh, Lake Okeechobee, and then right up through Central Florida, including Orlando, Tampa, up to Gainesville, Tallahassee and uh, portions of the panhandle in general. So there are still options on the table. This next 24 hours for Elsa is the stuff that we really watch closely. It's all about what uh, is going to happen as we come into contact, Elsa comes in contact with Cuba. 
And as far as folks who have been watching us here on Track in the Tropics for, for the last couple of years now, this is we're, we're relatively early on here as far as the timeline with mm. what we have. With this system now slowing down a bit here considerably before we get to this land interaction with Cuba, everybody, as far as Tampa Bay impacts, I know we have a lot of folks joining us in the Tampa Bay area. We're talking about really Tuesday as far as those impacts, maybe you know early Tuesday morning. We're going to keep a very close eye on that movement speed because that movement speed will dictate exactly when South Florida gets hit, when the Tampa Bay area gets hit. And talking about speeds here, let's get to Heather Mitchell, hashtag KJB. Hey is the storm likely to speed up or slow down, or is it expected to remain moving at about 15 miles per hour? What do you think, Greg? Uh, I think we've got an opportunity to uh, see this slow down for uh, a moment in time as it tries to get away from Cuba. If it can reorganize itself, we may actually see this thing lift and speed up just a tad more. Uh, definitely seeing in the models at the end of uh, kind of that five-day-ish outlook. So talking about Tuesday, moving through Wednesday and Thursday, we see a drastic change uh, to uh, where we see uh, the uh, center uh, of Elsa. So we get a, a speed up here. Has a lot to do with the uh, upper level winds uh, and how they're uh, directioned uh, through that kind of time frame and location uh, of uh, the U.S. and where else is going to be around that time frame. You could see a frontal boundary system there right behind that front uh, that's off around the panhandle of Florida there. You could see all of those reds and greens. That's your frontal boundary system. Behind that is an area of high pressure. It's going to give you a, a, a ridge uh, and, and a dip in the jet stream. All of that coming into contact with it will help it speed up. And of course, uh, also monitoring that small high pressure system that's around that uh, south uh, southeastern side of the Gulf of Mexico uh, if that starts to really uh intensify, you could have a better opportunity to uh, lift uh, Elsa off of Cuba, and uh, that may allow it to uh, speed up just a tad. Uh, for this time frame, honestly, I think holding true to anywhere between 10 and 15 miles per hour is pretty solid, but we have to go through Cuba. We're going to see what happens in the end. Let's get to this next one here from Hayden Henny here in the Facebook Live comment section. Hashtag, hey, Greg, how far will storm surge come in? We live 15 minutes from the beach and don't know if it will make it to us in Venice here. Now, let, let's, let's, yeah, let's, I'll bring you guys both up here on screen to talk sure. about this one. Sure. So, uh, you know, we, we already have an op opportunity to see storm surge uh, in, uh, in a major impact zone uh, that's further south. Uh, and we're talking about the Florida Keys here. And right now, uh, there is an opportunity for storm surge for sure. But so far, the models are indicating it not being as aggressive. Uh, we are looking at about one to two feet worth of storm surge in the direct impact zone uh, of, uh, of Elsa. So I call that some good news, uh, meaning that as we continue to uh, move north uh, closer to uh, the Venice area, uh, we may have better news for them. Right, Colleen? Yeah, no, I think that's exactly right. I agree. One to two feet storm surge with a system. But again, it depends what Elsa looks like. Also, the wind direction does a lot with the storm surge. Absolutely. If you are on the east side of it, you will probably get the most of the storm surge, and that can still be one to three feet. So uh, areas that are prone to flooding, such as if you live along the beach or a low-lying area, at Tampa Bay floods easily. So really just if you happen to get the strong winds and live along an area that's prone to flooding, just go ahead and set those preparations in place because it's better to be safe than sorry when we're talking about tropical systems. I love how you mentioned, Colleen, the direction of those winds. I want to actually continue to stretch on that for just a quick second here. You could still get storm surge on the east coast of Florida just from the pull through of a tropical system. Now, granted, Elsa is looking to be on the weaker side for us. That's definitely going to be some good news. But just as an example of, of, of pulling up a, a Category 2 hurricane, and that may be on the west coast of Florida, you'll see storm surge uh, coming through on the east side of Florida just because of the absolute flow that it needs to feed itself. Uh, you're pushing, or I should say really pulling, the Atlantic Ocean onto shore. So uh, these systems, you can't rule out even the east coast of for uh, tropical, uh, you know, characteristics. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree 100%. And even over here in the Gulf Coast, I, I'm already expecting high risk for rip currents by Wednesday. So if you are in Alabama and you're here visiting for the holidays, be careful of the water because even if it enters the eastern Gulf of Mexico, it's like a bowl and we all, it interacts with, with everything that's in the, in the Gulf. So 
just be careful of the water over here in Alabama and especially over in Florida. This is the last call, folks, for questions here in the Facebook Live comment section. We've got some coming in here. I see from North Carolina, some coming in from portions of the Gulf Coast. Again, J.B. Buno, meteorologist Greg Bennett, Colleen Peterson joining us from Mobile, Alabama, WKRG. Big shout out to everybody over there at KRG. Let's get to Stacey Goldson. This is the question I was referencing uh, earlier. Uh, hashtag hey, JB, I live in Broward County, Florida, closer to the Keys. What should we expect possibly from Elsa? And guys, uh, not only, let's talk about both regions here. We're talking about Broward County. We just, we can touch on that here again for one mm -hmm. second again, South Florida, but then also the Florida Keys. Yeah, the, the southernmost portion of our beautiful state here of Florida. Uh, I have family down there in the Keys. They're monitoring this extremely closely. Uh, so, Colleen, Greg, what do we say to folks joining us again from uh, the Keys and Broward County? We'll talk about those two regions. Man, that's a, that's a rough situation, right? Because they're still dealing with the cleanup of a hurricane season years ago uh, out there over there. So, you know, it, it, it's rough when we're talking about tropical weather. And we don't even think about um, as local Floridians. And uh, Colleen, I think you can uh, you could chime in on this, too, because uh, she's a local Floridian as well. Uh, she understands that when we get into tropical storms, everyone's like, ah, you know, oh, it's fine. We're going to the house is still going to stand. Everything is going to be just fine. You know, we're going to sit tight. These are rainmakers for the most part. That's that's what we have to watch out for. Granted, they do come with their own gusty conditions at times uh, and uh, can definitely take down a tree or two. But for the most part, uh, it's all about the speed of these tropical storms and they are always major rainmakers. So I'm concerned more so of flooding rather than a, a, a wind situation or even a storm surge situation. Colleen, do you agree? I would call Elsa a rainmaker. I agree a hundred percent. And the same with the Florida Keys, definitely just protect the boats. We dealt with storms last year and uh, they people weren't sure if they should protect the boats, but definitely just because tropical storms can do some dock damage. So just have the preparations in place. And yeah, rainmaker is definitely what we're focusing on with the main impact from Elsa. Let's get to this next one here from Jamie Lynn Simmons from Fox 8's Facebook page. Hashtag KJB. Ask about Myrtle Beach. All right, so now talking about some different portions of the United States here, uh, some uh, impacts in the days ahead, even later on this week. All right, so yeah, we're going north. We're going north, right? So we're going through South Carolina, North Carolina here, portions of Georgia. Uh, absolutely, uh, you've got to watch out for still some uh, gusty conditions out there. It's a completely different landscape uh, in those states, right? You here in, in the state of Florida, um, you know, you either have extremely wide root systems that go deep, or uh, you have uh, your palm trees that have a very uh, dense root system. They're able to hold and withstand themselves even in a sandy soil. As you move further north, getting into the foothills of the Appalachians, uh, you get into a completely different uh, species of tree out there. You're talking about different soils. Basically, what I'm getting at is that you have a better opportunity for trees to go down in less wind in those locations. So first and foremost, uh, we have an opportunity here in the cone of uncertainty around the Carolinas, maybe sustained winds of 40 to 45 miles per hour. That's the eye wall that we're discussing here, not necessarily the outer rim of the system. But uh, nonetheless, you could still have gusts at 45, 50 miles per hour, even in those outer areas. Those types of winds have been known in those areas to drop entire trees. So that's something that you have to concern yourself with uh, in those locations. It is still going to be a rainmaker, I think, Colleen. What do you think? Well, hold on, guys. Yeah. Let's get to, I want to get Colleen's perspective here really quickly because we got a lot of questions okay. to get to here in the final five minutes of the show. Jenna Short from Fox 59 in Indianapolis, hashtag AJB. I'll throw this from Colleen's way close near her. Uh, how will this affect Pensacola Destin area next week? Well, we really have that stalled out front over us right now, right? So that will be our forecast for this week because right now Elsa is trending over the Florida Plan Peninsula or Florida Panhandle and then off eastward. So we're out of the track of Elsa right now, but there is a chance that Elsa could weaken and become more messy and we could get some of those outer showers, outer rain bands uh, towards our area if that happens to be the scenario. But right now, I think the main impact that we'll feel 
is rough surf. We'll have high risk for rip currents. The surf will be rough. And I think that's the main impacts that we'll see here and possibly some tropical moisture and higher rain chances. All right, we'll kind of pick up the speed here to get to as many of these questions as possible. Rita Pearl, WMBB's Facebook page, those one Greg's way, hashtag AJB. Why is the pressure so high? Isn't that a bad sign? No, that's a good sign. <laughs> that's but that's, that's the, but you know what, Greg? Sign. You know what, Greg? That, that's a perfect opportunity for for me to, to remind. This is where we can actually educate people here about yeah. tropics education and teach people about tropical development. No, this is definitely this is definitely a, a good thing. As we drop the pressure, we're starting to uh, squeeze the uh, the system together. It's starting to intensify. It, it grows. It gets more powerful. It gets more dense. Uh, so when you drop the pressure and you get something like a 980 or a 990, you're talking about you know hurricanes or major hurricanes here. So we want the pressure to rise uh, because that's kind of sort of um, think about a flower blossoming right you know you start off with this dense ball uh, that's your low pressure but if you bring in something that alleviates that pressure it increases the pressure and kind of sort of broadens it out and decreases its intensity uh, so that's what we want to do that's a good thing and uh, this one has been rather odd um, you know it's kind of sort of baffled even NHC that we've been seeing a uh, high pressure here um, and still dealing with gusts uh, at uh, you know 67 70 miles per hour, sustained winds of 60 miles per hour. Uh, that may have uh, something to do with the uh, mid-level rotation of uh, the, uh, the tropical system. It could have something to do with the vertical shear, not necessarily affecting the entirety of ELSA. Uh, but uh, I call that good news for us. We may be dealing with a less intense system. Can you just picture Greg at the front of a classroom just teaching a whole bunch of teens and 20-something-year-olds you know, about tropical development? That, and you know? I do remember maybe teaching Colleen a few things about weather back oh. at Florida State. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, back at Florida State. Yep, I remember that. <laughs> Learning new things here all the time about the meteorologists that join us here. We got two more questions here. Isaac Banks joining us. Hashtag Hey Colleen. I hope Florida will be safe? Question mark. Hopefully Florida will be safe. Well, when we're dealing with a tropical system, you got to have the preparations in place. And I really do uh, Surfside. I mean, our thoughts go out to Surfside. That's what what I'm focusing on, how far west, because right now, in benefit of them, we want this storm to stay in the eastern Gulf away from that area, because that is the weakest part of Florida right now, to say the least. Uh, so we are watching it closely and looking at this tropical moisture forecast. Elsa is going to be a rain maker, to say the least. That will be the main impacts that we'll be focusing on. And it could branch all the way over to us here in Destin. So higher rain chances, maybe not necessarily Elsa itself, but higher rain chances in and around the Gulf Coast. Uh, so we'll be watching this closely Wednesday. Uh, the system is slowly uh, is slowing down as it heads just off the coast of Tampa, could head over to Tampa. There's a lot of question marks really just going to wait. As Greg was saying, the next 24 hours is everything when we're talking about this forecast for Elsa with the intensity and the track Elsa will be taking. And the final one we're just going to throw up here from Lauren. Uh, get some great comments. We've seen several comments like this. Uh, hashtag AJB, hashtag A Greg, hashtag A Colleen. Thank you guys for being here on 4th of July and keeping us updated. Yeah, I, I think I can speak for all of us that we would much rather be at that 4th of July barbecue and, uh, you know, getting on our, our swimming trunks, our bathing suits and hitting up the pool. But, hey, guys, remember, we're here every day during hurricane season as far as uh, keeping our viewers informed, prepared, in the know. And, guys, we're going to be have, having a lot more episodes as far as uh, tracking the tropics here in the hours and days ahead. I'll speak on that in just a second. But, guys, your final thoughts here. What are you going to be looking for? you know, closely at here and the hours ahead as Elsa gets a little bit closer to Cuba. It's, it's going to be, it's going to be how, uh, Elsa is going to interact, uh, with, uh, with the Island of Cuba. Is it going to drag along its coast for a bit and then start to exit out towards the Northwestern side, or is it going to start to take a, a straight, uh, track North kind of cut through quickly, uh, that may organize it, reorganize it and intensify it. And, uh, we could also see a slight uh, directional pattern, uh, change here too. So that's what I'm going to be looking looking for in the next 12 hours. Same here. It's seeing how well Elsa holds itself together. If they'll hold the strong convection, because looking at the satellite imagery right now, it looks impressive with the amount of rain that is wrapped around the system, but at the inner core, it's weaker than what it looks like. So looking at 
once it emerges off of Cuba, where exactly it'll merge off is that starting point as to where we'll be focusing and moving forward. Uh, but again, multiple scenarios on the board, just prepare for a rainmaker Elsa will be. I'd like to thank meteorologists Greg Bennett and Colleen Peterson. Colleen joining us from WKRG in Mobile, Alabama. Uh, WKRG News 5, a lot of love there for WKRG. <laughs> Greg Bennett, WFLA here in Tampa, Florida. We've got a lot more meteorologists ready to go for additional episodes here, folks, of Tracking the Tropics here live for you from your uh, hurricane headquarters. Our next update, and it, it's a big one. It's coming your way at 5 o'clock. Cuba here is that figurative fork in the road as far as the intensity forecast what will cuba do to elsa will it just will, Kels will there be a weakening trend here we're going to monitor this very very closely here with all the meteorologists that join us here everybody on track in the tropics so five o'clock eastern four o'clock central is your next update we'll be here live with more meteorologists to bring you the very latest here on elsa as a reminder our regular episodes are wednesdays two o'clock eastern one o'clock central whether or not we have a storm to track, we're always talking about hurricane and tropical development topics. So we're going to continue to do that over the course of the 2021 hurricane season. For Colleen and Greg and Ian, who joined us earlier on in the episode, I'm JB Buno. We'll see you at 5 o'clock Eastern, 4 o'clock Central for the next update here on Tracking the Tropics.